Thank you. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Again, happy Friday. My name is Kyle Rausch, and I have the pleasure of serving as the executive director of the UIC Study Abroad Office. And we are very excited today to have not one, but three incredible study abroad programs to, to share with you, all from the College of Nursing. Um, we have uh, two brand new faculty directed programs that we are excited to promote and a returning program as well. And so we hope that you find these of interest. We'll be doing um, a brief overview of each of the three programs facilitated by the faculty directors who will be traveling with you if you sign up for one of these. So it'll be a great time for you to learn specifics about where you could go this summer, as well as ask the faculty questions about what they've got planned. After those overviews, we'll be providing a short um, session on how to apply for the programs. And then we'll end by talking about funding resources because we know as students, you wanna know how to make these programs as affordable as possible. So hopefully that sounds like a great agenda for the hour that we have. There should be plenty of time for questions. My colleague Crystal here is also from the study abroad office. So we'll be keeping an eye on the chat. So feel free to throw your questions in there. Otherwise at the end, we'll open it up um, in case you want to unmute yourselves. And with that, I think um, I'll pass it over to Dr. Meharry first to talk about her new program, which will be in Rwanda this summer. Take it away. Um, can you see that um, first slide? We're not seeing it yet. We're still seeing our, our faces. And I do have a copy of your presentation, Pamela. Oh, so. yes. If you could go from there, that okay. would be good. Yeah, bear with me one moment while I open it, everyone. Shouldn't take long now for your patience. It's loading. It's loading because I think there's some beautiful pictures in here to open it. Well, hello. Okay. Somebody in the background, dude. Yes, yes. If you could mute yourself, please. Oh, thanks. Thanks for doing that. Sorry, it's still in the process of opening up. In that case, if you don't mind, Pamela, just to give it a chance to open so we stay on time. Maybe Gwyneth, do you mind starting with your program if that's okay with everyone? Sorry about that. Yeah, sure. I'll go first. Thank you. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> okay. All right, well, hi everybody. So um, my name is Dr. Gwyneth Milbreath. I'm a clinical assistant professor in the uh, Department of Population Health Nursing Sciences in the UIC College of Nursing. I'm based in Chicago. Um, I'm also the associate director for the Global Health Leadership Office. And so one of my main jobs is to help develop new study abroad opportunities for students. So I'm very excited about this. Um, the program that I'm gonna be talking about is um, a program that I've done for almost a decade now. Um, it's in St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. And so the focus of this program is disaster preparedness and global health. Um, my background is as an emergency department nurse and I've also done some um, medical, like short-term medical type, um, I would call them mission trips, but just like relief trips um, in rural areas um, in really underserved areas in the United States. So if you have questions about that, I'm happy to talk about that later. Um, but interestingly, I actually went on this trip um, as a student when I was in undergrad, um, the first year that they offered it at my university. And, um, you know, I ended up keeping up the relationship and was the TA and now the other faculties has retired. And so now I get to do the, um, the program. 
along with one of the other faculty member who's at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro. And so what's really cool about this program is it's not just nursing students, it's open to everybody across the university. Um, and then we'll also be working with another faculty member. Um, her name is Audrey Snyder, and she's at the University of North Carolina, and she'll be bringing some students as well. So you'll not only get to work with students within nursing, but also outside of nursing, as well as students from another university, all in the beautiful setting of St. Kitts and Nevis. <clears throat> So usually the first question is, I've never heard of St. Kitts and Nevis, where is it? Um, so it's in the Caribbean. You can see the yellow circle there. It's a tiny island there um, near St. Martin and Antigua and Barbuda. Um, it's part of the Lesser Antilles, technically. Um, it has kind of the Atlantic side and a Caribbean side, and you can easily tell which side you're on because the Atlantic is much rougher and the Caribbean is much more like a, like a lake water and very, very safe to swim in. Um, so this is uh, what St. Kitts looks like. Um, it is a uh, volcanic island, naturally. It has it, The volcano is dormant. It hasn't erupted in living memory, um, but it is very mountainous. So you have a beach surrounded by a very natural mountainous area in the middle, um, where it's circled is North Frigate Bay. That's where we'll be staying. Um, which is on the Atlantic side of the island, and it's close to Basseterre, which is their capital city. Um, and also, um, it's the narrowest part of the island, so you can actually easily walk from the Atlantic side to the Caribbean side, which is pretty cool. Um, so as I said, I already introduced myself, but I am the main instructor, and then we'll be working with um, Dr. Audrey Snyder from the University of North Carolina Greensboro. She's a, a nursing faculty as well. She's one of their associate deans. Um, the cost is about $4,000, um, and that covers your tuition for three credits, your airfare, all of your lodging, all of your in-country transportation, all of our group activities that we're going to talk about, and then we do most uh, most meals, usually um, almost all of the dinners, um, breakfast, we usually just go to a grocery store or something and you have a place that you can prepare meals there. And then lunch, a lot of times we'll pack meals, um, pack a lunch because we're out doing stuff all day. Um, we are, uh, we just found out we can't, we're going to be changing hotels to a um, option that's a little more affordable and also um, better located. So um, that cost will most likely go down a little bit. Um, last year, the cost was about $3,200. So I imagine it might be a little more than that because of um, inflation due to COVID-19 and all of that. But um, I'm guessing the final price after we adjust it will probably be somewhere between $32 and $4,000, um, just to give you a, an idea of the cost. Um, so some of the things that we do, um, we do a lot. One of the main highlights of the program is a community engaged project. So um, like I said, I've been working in this country for over a decade and we work very, very closely with the National Emergency Management Agency there, um, which is like their equivalent of FEMA. And so um, every year we work with them to um, complete a project that's important to them and their goals um, as a country. So for example, in 2018, we did an, a national survey um, asking about what the community knew about um, disaster preparedness, education, what types of disasters they were vulnerable to, if they had a personal plan and that type of thing. Um, and then over the next year, we anal I analyzed the data, we presented it back to them and actually it's helping to inform their policies going forward, which is pretty cool. Um, so the 2019 project actually came out of that assessment. And so we, um, what we did is we visited um, long-term healthcare facilities, health centers, um, and community shelters to interview their staff to ask them about their um, disaster plans because we found out they all had plans, but none of them were written down. They weren't easily accessible and the national office didn't know what they were. So we interviewed them, found out what their plans were, wrote them up for them, shared it back with them, got feedback and then um, had them shared with the national office. So that was all formalized. Um, in 2020, we had planned to evaluate um, the school disaster readiness as part of our regional Caribbean wide initiative, but that had you know, didn't happen because of COVID. 2021 was canceled um, as well as COVID. And then we're in the process right now of um, developing the project for 2022. Um, so our accommodations, um, we say uh, both on St. Kitts and on Nevis, they're two islands. Um, we spend about a week in St. Kitts 
<clears throat> in a week in Nevis in St. Kitts. We're going to be staying in Sugar Bay. Um, so on the left, that if you see, there's kind of like a corner of a yellow building. So those are the cottages we typically rent. And those are the ones that the students stay in. So they literally face the beach. You can like hear the ocean while you're sleeping, which is pretty cool. Um, and then they also have a pool and everything. Um, in Nevis, we stay on um, Wally Beach, which is the top right picture. Um, it is honestly my favorite beach in the entire world and I'm a huge beach fan. So um, it's beautiful, um, clear blue waters, light breeze. Um, it's amazing. It's like heaven on earth there. And um, it's uh, both of these are more locally owned um, hotels are not huge chains, so it really helps support the local economy and you get more of that local feel rather than that kind of tourist feel, which is really important for me as a faculty member to show you as students. Some of the activities that we do, so these are some pictures of um, downtown Bastyr. Um, the one with the rainbow is not a stock photo. I literally took that um, like from the top of the bell tower there is this beautiful rainbow. So it really is as beautiful as all these pictures show. Um, their main industry is tourism. So they have a lot of cruise ship traffic. Obviously that is changing now with COVID-19, um, but uh, they have this huge port where um, cruise ship visitors come to visit, um, which is vastly different than what the actual country looks like. So we talk a lot kind of examining what those um, stereotypes are around Caribbean countries and what the actual um, countries are like for the people that live there um, from kind of a health, um, a health and culture perspective. Uh, we also visit the hospitals. We usually get tours from the um, chief of staff or the head nurse there. Um, there's a hospital in Nevis and a hospital in St. Kitts. Um, we have a long relationship with one of the former chief medical officers, who's one of the two pediatricians on the island, and he does a great talk for our students about um, kind of general public health um, in St. Kitts and Nevis, um, and we are all have also worked with the Minister of Health as well. Um, so it really all depends on what their needs are and who's available, but we do have access to very high government um, officials that are experts in their community and really do um, a lot on a local level, but as well as a national and international level. Um, for those of you that might be Hamilton fans, uh, little known fact is Alexander Hamilton was born in Nevis. So um, his birthplace is still there. Um, it's in the far right. You can see the Hamilton home. So we visit the Hamilton home. Um, there's also uh, volcanic, like warm natural springs, hot springs that we visit. Um, and there's also this beautiful plantation um, style hotel called Mount Pelier um, that's very fancy and was a famous uh, favorite uh, vacation spot for Princess Diana and her children. So let me just remind everybody to make sure that you are muted. Um, some other things that we do. Uh, we do a mass casualty sim uh, simulation where we pretend that there's some sort of disaster and you have to we learn how to do triage um, and we kind of compete in that. It's really fun. We do some other team building exercises, which are really great as well. And then these are just some pictures from when we went in 2019 um, with UIC students. Um, you know, that we went snorkeling, we do zip lining, we do this awesome hike up the volcano in Nevis. Um, there's amazing food from all over the world there, uh, beautiful gardens, beautiful views. Um, it's, it's really a lot of fun. Um, if you want to kind of uh, look through on your own, we do have a Twitter that we posted kind of updates and pictures to. So it's at UIC in SKN in St. Kitts Nevis. So if you look that up on Twitter, you can kind of see some of the stuff that we did there as well. And I think that's it. So um, we'll hold questions till the end. So write them down or you can ask in the chat and then I'll go ahead and hand it over to Pam. Thank you, Dr. Milbrath. All right, let me go ahead and bring up our next presentation. Okay, one moment. Oh, wrong screen. Let me just change that real quick. All right, Dr. Meharry, take it away. 
All right, so um, hello, it's uh, Pamela, uh, Dr. Pamela Meharry. I'm in, actually in Africa, you can see that map on the left, there's an airplane right on the African continent and it's flying into Kigali. Um, and so that's the location of the study abroad program. Next slide, please. Yes, so I'm actually in Rwanda right now and I am part of the UIC faculty. I've been with my UIC since August uh, 2015 as part of the Human Resources for Health. It's a global program through US academic um, institutions. And I have loved my time here so much. I've learned so much and working with the local people and faculty that I wanted to bring this opportunity to you, to UIC students, um, to learn about maternal child health in this amazing environment. And that photo on the left is Lake Kivu, and that's one of the excursions that we're going to uh, the um, second week, actually, of the program. Next slide, please. Um, so there's many benefits to having a faculty-directed program, as you just heard. Um, there's, um, it's led by a trusted member of the faculty. I mentioned that I've been with UIC since 2015. I'm very familiar with the local environment from living and working here. Um, this program is great for first time travelers or even experienced travelers. Um, we can increase opportunities for those who, um, who want um, more out of this. Um, and it's also, of course, being in Africa, we've got a diverse um, student community and uh, for, for you to um, relate to here. This course is uh, six credits and it goes towards your degree and it's in a shorter time frame. It's in July uh, 2022, depending on uh, COVID conditions. And uh, that's, that photo on the left is uh, one of the many cafes here. And I was meeting some graduate students to discuss their research publications. It's um, quite a common thing to do not to meet on campus if, if they've graduated. Next slide, please. So um, this course is NURSE uh, 498 for undergraduates, 594 for graduate students. It's a special topic course and it is on global maternal and child health. So we're looking at the global aspect of maternal child health, the regional of Africa and the local Rwandan culture. And it is an elective, six credit elective. And on the right, you'll see a photograph. It's the University of Rwanda. It's, uh, that that's the largest uh, university in Rwanda and it has many campuses and this is the local campus where, where you would be attending class. Next slide. So the eligibility is a minimum GPA of 2.75 if you've completed uh, 12 UIC credits or more. Uh, this program would be good for nurses, midwives, uh, public health students, perhaps even social workers and uh, medical students if they're interested in global health and maternal child health. And um, the highlights of this is we're going to be having interaction, interactive lectures at the University of Rwanda. We're also going to be going to the schools lab to learn about maternal and neonatal resuscitation skills. And you can see on the right, uh, that's a nurse learning how to do the helping babies breathe on resuscitation that is recommended by the World Health for low um, resource countries. And a third event will be the maternal child observations at the tertiary uh, teaching hospital in Kigali. It's the largest hospital in, this, um, in, the, in the city. And so um, there's many things uh, for us to do. There's also, we're having guest speakers. We're attending to uh, local health, international health organizations, uh, many opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the program itinerary for the first uh, 10 days. And you can see it starts on um, the 1st of July. You would arrive in Rwanda. Usually it's an evening flight um, from international and most flights come via um, Amsterdam or Brussels. And so it's, it's an eight hour flight from Chicago to Europe and then from Europe to 
Rhonda, it's another eight hours. And so typically you arrive here in less than 24 hours. Um, so Saturday, uh, the 2nd of July, we have an orientation and that includes many things. Uh, one thing will be an officer coming from the US Embassy to give you um, some orientation to the area and talk about safety issues and things uh, for you to, to do and not do. Uh, we also have a language class. Uh, the local language here, one of them is uh, Kinarunda. So you will learn some greetings and thank you and please and other things like that. And also, if you're not interested in learning Kinarunda for an hour, we also have a French lesson. You might be more familiar with French and you might feel that that's more beneficial. Um, so we do have an outing in the afternoon to uh, walk about town and, and uh, see the local environment. And the same thing on Sunday afternoon, the 3rd of July, we will have a, um, a trip to the market um, so that you can find um, your way around because you'll be um, buying and cooking your own food in your kitchen. And so we want you to be able to know where to buy things um, and, and to be able to obtain uh, other amenities that you need. And then starting on the 4th of July, rather special day, um, is class. And so Mondays and Tuesdays of every uh, week, we have class from 8.30 to 3. Uh, and of course, you have time off for lunch. And then um, on uh, Wednesday, we either have observation in the hospital or else time in the skills lab, or sometimes both. Um, we will have some kind of July the 4th celebration. We used to go to the US Embassy for a lovely um, American picnic, um, but the new ambassador came in and things got changed a bit, but perhaps we'll, um, we'll find out what's going on and we'll go. And then uh, by Friday, we have um, some more cultural events actually. Um, we visit a genocide memorial and a reconciliation village and um, sometimes that, that's, um, that's some information that you need to, to learn about uh, because that's Rhonda's history, um, but also how they've grown from that event. And, um, and now uh, all people work alongside each other you know, harmoniously. Um, after that session, we'll have a debrief and um, reflection. Typically takes about an hour after that kind of a cultural event. Now in Rwanda, it's a government mandate uh, for students and faculty and anybody that can get time off work is to partake in some kind of sports at 3 p.m. And so uh, that's what we're hoping to do. Um, often people will go out and play soccer or basketball or some kind of sports. Maybe they go for a walk, um, but we will get involved with the students on campus at that time. Uh, the next day on Saturday, um, we have arranged a traditional cooking workshop and so that'll be about 10 a.m. You'll get to sleep in a little bit. Um, and in that situation, we go to the women's center and it's the women that actually will come with us and um, uh, select food. We'll pick out food to cook and uh, we'll cook a Rwanda lunch under the guidance of these women at the women's center. So actually I'm really looking forward to that in addition to other things. Uh, and then you, so you'll be getting, so you'll be um, buying and making your own lunch. And then uh, Sunday you're off. And so the following week and subsequent weeks, Monday, Tuesday is in class and Wednesday is in the hospital or um, simulation lab. And to the, to the lower part here, the photo on the left is Lake Kivu. That's our first um, ex weekend excursion. And it's about a three hour drive here. We will be going in a, in a bus. And uh, the last part of the drive actually is not so nice. Uh, the, like the last half hour. So instead of putting you through that, we are, have arranged a boat ride uh, from the local town. It takes about a little over an hour in the boat and we arrive at that lodge by a boat. And there's a nearby coffee plantation that we'll be going to in the afternoon. There's also the Congo Nile um, trail is there. So we'll be going on a hike, but that's probably Sunday morning. And there's beach activities that we can have either Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning. And then the next excursion is the third week and that's at Akagera National Park. And this is where we go on safari. Uh, there's activities, um, what we call game drives. And there's all sorts of animals there in addition to elephants, um, lions and rhinos, buffaloes, zebras, um, leopards, uh, lots of 
lots of birds as well. So it's a really lovely environment. Um, both of these excursions are way uh, out of the city and um, very open and, and very enjoyable. Lots of fresh air make you feel very healthy. Yes, next slide, please. So um, to tell you more about the city, uh, so we're uh, so we'll be in a city that I'm um, called Kigali and it's uh, runders in East Africa. It's between East Africa and Central Africa, actually. And so we can get outside. You'll be here in July. It's the dry season and the temperatures, actually the temperatures are year round in the 70s and 80s. I just love it. And um, one of the things that Randa's uh, quite, quite well known for is, is their focus on the maternal, um, maternal and fetal um, health, health goals in relation to uh, sustainable development goals. That's what we're in now. And so they've been trying, they met the um, Millennium Development Goals in relation to maternal mortality being under the goal of um, well, the target. And so um, they're, they're working really hard to also um, keep the numbers down for sustainable development goals as well. And, but there's many opportunities here for you to learn about maternal child health. I believe that this is the first maternal child health program that UIC a study abroad offers has offered. So I'm very excited to be able to be part of this because um, I still love what I do and I'm going to make it really enjoyable for you too. Next slide. So the accommodation, we've arranged you for you to be in an apartment building. That's it on the top right, it's Alto's Apartments. And um, each, There'll be two students to one apartment. You'll have your own room, your own toilet, and your own desk. Uh, and then you'll share the bathroom, the kitchen, the living dining room, and there's even a balcony here. Um, one really nice thing about this is you have high-speed internet and also a laundry service where they'll wash and iron your clothes weekly. Uh, there's many other benefits to this apartment building. Um, it's a nice, safe environment. It's, got a gate guard and it's secure and it's it's very close to all the amenities you you have a market a german market market just um five minutes away there's lots of cafes restaurants pharmacies all within 10 minutes and even when you go to school um your skills lab and the hospital are all within a 10 minute walk um, from your apartment and the accommodations on the weekends so are also <laughs> Uh, next, next slide. I'm just about finished. Um, so the program cost is uh, 4,876 and that's for six credits. Uh, it includes um, airport transport, includes um, shared hotels, local transportation for those excursions, um, some group meals and international health insurance. And what it doesn't include, you can see your passport, the visa that you get at the airport, um, airfare, individual meals, and personal expenses, you'll find that that'll be about the same cost as the US. Now, some of the things here are cheaper, like um, some fruits and vegetables. Uh, but overall, I think you'd um, probably spend about the same as what you'd do in the US. And then there's some other additional fees there. And um, also we have horse riding. If you're interested in that, it's really close. It's on um, Mount Kigali, which is just uh, like 20 minutes from the city and uh, it's very reasonably priced if you like that sort of thing. So lots of outdoor activities because the weather's nice and uh, things are close. And then I think Kyle's going to go over the um, funding um, part and uh, if we... Yes, yeah, if you don't mind, I'll do... No, 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 it's fine. I, I finished. So um, I would really love it if you could come to Africa. I've uh, it's just a really wonderful place to visit and to, to work. I think you'd find it really um, beneficial and I'd be very happy to answer any questions or concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mayberry. Appreciate it. Looking forward to that program. All right, last but not least, let's travel to Spain now with Dr. Kilroy. Sue, please take it away. Sue, you're muted. You'll have to unmute yourself. I, I got it. Thanks. Can everybody see the um, screen? Yes. 
Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Dr. Sue Kilroy and I am here to tell you about a brand new uh, study abroad course called Culture and Health in Spain. I'm really excited. Um, we will be the first group that go this May of 2022. Hope, hopefully long as everything with COVID works out. So just as an overview, the dates are May 8th to June 5th of 2022. The location is Pamplona, Spain. The course is NUEL 498, Culture and Health in Spain. It's a six credit course and it is an elective. Um, I am the faculty director and many, I didn't introduce myself. I'm a faculty at the College of Nursing and I'm also the director of the simulation lab. I know a lot of the nursing students know me from the sim lab. Um, the program fee is 6,005. We're gonna keep it under $6,500. And that includes everything but your airfare um, we are working on reducing that, so hopefully we'll be able to get it down. And then I know at the end, Kyle is going to talk about scholarships and other funding methods. But just for today, just know it's under $6,500, and that does not include your airfare. Um, your eligibility, you need to be a BSN student who have completed um, your junior year. So that's one whole year at the UIC College of Nursing, and that includes two semesters of clinical. And then the students must be in good academic standing and receive permission um, from the family, uh, from the family, from the faculty. So that's just an overview. I'm gonna go into more detail as I go through the slides. So like I said, it's a new study abroad course. Um, it's offered in partnership with the University of Navarra in Pamplona, Spain. It's a four week program. So the first week is nursing summer school and I'll go into more detail on my pre next slides. The next three weeks are a medical Spanish language course. So in the morning, we will spend time in the sim lab. It's, it's um, coordinated with simulation and we will learn Spanish um, for healthcare workers. And then in the afternoons, we'll go and do community health clinical experiences. So that's the, the last three weeks. Um, every week, the UIC group, myself and the students will have a weekly debriefing session. So we get to talk about all the great experiences we've had what went well, what could we improve, things like that. And then also embedded throughout the entire four weeks are um, cultural activities and excursions. And just if you can see right here, Pamplona is in the north of Spain. We're only about two hours from the French border. Um, so that's where we're located. So um, now I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail. So the nursing summer school, we're working with the University of Navarra the first week, we're going to um, learn with students from all over the globe. Now, usually students from Singapore and England and Italy and the United States all come together. Now, due to COVID, I think definitely we're going to go and the University of Penn from the United States and then the Spanish stu the students from Spain will be there. I think the other countries are deciding, but they're definitely planning on having it. Um, the other thing, Dr. Milberth and I were really lucky. We um, did a site visit in October. So here we are in the upper left, we're meeting with the Dean and the Associate Dean of the uh, University. Over on the right is Rothio. She's the program director at the University of Navarra. I mean, I could do a whole presentation on her. She's absolutely wonderful. She's so excited that we're coming. Um, she's great to work with, with the students and the faculty. So we will all get to meet her. And then these are just camp, uh, pictures of the campus. It's a beautiful campus. Um, here we are in the front of the nursing school. This is one of the classrooms. Um, and then just the courtyards and stuff. So um, it's, I can't say enough great things about the university. It's very, it's very beautiful. So also associated with the university is the University of Navarra Hospital. Um, and we have, we were able to do a tour. Now I'll let you know, because of COVID, we're not gonna be able to do our clinical sites here, but they are talking about trying to get the students a tour of the hospital. Um, we will do our clinical sites in the community. However, I did want to introduce you. So we met the director of nursing, one of the nurse practitioners. As you can see, here's the entrance to the hospital. Here's a picture of one of their hospital beds, looks similar to ours. Um, they are JACO accredited. So that's me pointing to the sign, which is very impressive. And then this little sign here, this is a secret, don't tell anybody, but we learned that they had a fashion designer come in and work with the nurses to um, create their scrubs. And then every day the, the, the nurses just drop their scrubs off and they get washed and ironed. And when you come into work, you just, so we are so impressed. Dr. Milberth is showing you all the hangers. You just pick up your scrubs and you always look beautiful for work. So we thought that was, we told them, we said, don't show our students this room because they'll all wanna move to Spain and work here. 
Um, so anyhow, the hospital is really beautiful. And um, like I said, we'll probably get a tour. We won't get to do our clinicals there. So even though I, oh, you know what? I'm gonna stop share for one minute because I forgot to um, do the sound. I always forget to do that. So even though we're not going to go in the hospital, I wanna show you a short three minute video this is the faculty and nurses at um, University of Maryland created this professional practice model. I thought I'd share this with you. Presentamos el modelo profesional de la práctica de enfermería de la Clínica Universidad de Navarra. Nuestro objetivo es eh, acompañar y cuidar a los pacientes y a sus familias y prestar un cuidado de calidad y con la máxima excelencia. Y no podemos entender excelencia sin práctica basada en la evidencia. La evidencia es lo que nos hace mejorar cada día nuestro trabajo y crear un entorno innovador y, por supuesto, siempre pensando en el beneficio para el paciente, para su entorno y su familia. Ahí la enfermería abarca de forma integral no solamente el enfermo, sino todo lo que le rodea. Ámbito social, familiar... Han pensado en mí como paciente aquí, pero también cuando vuelva me voy a casa para que yo pueda recuperarme y volver a ser el que era. La enfermera te da la clave eh, del cuidado del paciente y muchas veces te aporta eso que te falta a ti en empatizar del todo con el paciente para darle los, la mejor atención médica. Tenemos la capacidad de tomar decisiones con autonomía dentro de nuestra práctica diaria. La enfermera es totalmente capaz de trabajar liderando el conocimiento y liderando el cuidado de sus pacientes y, y yo creo que no se entiende eh, la enfermería de la clínica sin estar en ese alto nivel de calidad asistencial y, y científica. Es muy importante esa relación de, de confianza con el paciente. Y me parece que muchas veces esa es la clave para que juntos trabajemos y tratemos mejor al paciente. Con el modelo profesional de la práctica, de hecho, se propone que este impacto que se tiene sobre el paciente eh, pueda dar visibilidad a la actuación profesional de enfermería. Han sido muchas horas trabajando codo a codo. Es que el trabajo médico no es que mejore con la enfermería, es que no tiene sentido sin la enfermería. Es como un coche sin ruedas. Y no lo digo por la vitalidad de la pieza, sino porque no funciona. Nosotras somos las que estamos a pie de cama, las que vemos todas las necesidades de, de nuestros pacientes. Nosotros no tenemos que pensar y tratar y decidir el tratamiento y, y comunicarlo únicamente al paciente. Creo que hay que compartir con la enfermera para que ella también sea partícipe de ese manejo terapéutico o diagnóstico, lo que sea global. No con jerarquías ni con eh, compartimentos estancos, sino todos trabajando en equipo eficazmente por y para el paciente. El plantearnos realizar un posgrado que nos facilite y nos dé las herramientas para investigar, eso crea un entorno entre el equipo de enfermeras innovador y, por supuesto, siempre, siempre es beneficioso para el paciente. Han desarrollado un modelo en el cual el paciente lo es todo. Existimos por él. O sea, ser enfermera se nace. Tenemos un instinto en ver las necesidades en el paciente que otros dentro del equipo multidisciplinar no la ven. Las palabras son trabajo en equipo, trabajo entre compañeros. As you can see, I'm, I'm really excited. They have a great collaborative practice um, of patient care, and um, I can't wait to go over to learn with them and, and from them. Um, so I just wanted to show you that little clip. Um, so since we can't go in the hospital, we partnered with um, uh, the, the language department at the University of Navarra, and they have a developed medical Spanish language course. Um, and then in the afternoon, we'll do community health clinical experiences. 
So you can see here, this is another part of campus. There we are with the faculty from, it's called Ilse. Um, and so they have a program already developed and then they are going to, but what's really great about this, it's gonna be incorporated in the simulation lab. So we're gonna, in the mornings from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, we're gonna be in the sim lab and we're gonna have like patient cases. So we're gonna learn how to go in and introduce ourselves. You know, here's the call light. Um, here's um, how to do a respiratory assessment, how to do a head to toe assessment, but we're gonna learn how to do that in Spanish. Then we'll have lunch. Um, and then in the afternoons, they're going to um, introduce us to different um, organizations. So one, a couple of days a week, we'll work with children and we'll do health education, you know, how important exercise is or um, a good diet. Another time we might work with the elderly, um, maybe do an oral history with somebody in the community. Um, we also uh, might work with women who just had a um, baby and do um, care, teach them how to take care of their baby. So there's many community settings that we're going to work in and um, which great every day will be different and we'll, we'll get to meet people that really live in the Pamploma community. So that's going to be weeks um, two, three, and four after the, spent, after the nursing summer school. Um, and they have a beautiful sim lab, just like us. They use all the same equipment, the Lairdall equipment. Here we are with the director of their sim lab and Almudena, she's the lab coordinator. Um, and then we have some faculty up here testing out virtual reality. And there I am with their Lairdall mannequin. So um, it's really nice and it's great that they're gonna open their doors and allow us to use their sim lab. And I thought I'd show you, this is, uh, this is only like a minute clip. I'm gonna show you a quick, Quick peek into their sim lab. These are actual nursing students in their sim lab. Real quick. Um, just to give you, just so you can see the students in action. So that, that kind of is an overview of the programming, but there's also embedded throughout the, the whole month are cultural activities. And I just have some up here. Um, Antoni Gatti is known as the son of Barcelona. He's an amazing architect. And as you can see here, some of his work. Um, here we are at, um, oops, sorry. My things popped up. Here we are at um, Sagrada Familia. It's a beautiful basilica in Barcelona that um, has all has his work in it. Um, also, Park um, Guiel is the largest park in Barcelona, and you will also see Antoni Gatti's work throughout the park. Um, the running of the bulls. We won't be there for the running of the bulls, but there's Dr. Milworth and I pretending that the bulls are going to come down the street. But we'll learn the history and we'll learn about the. Um, how it's a big ceremony and why it's so important to Pamploma. And then also um, Cafe Arena, um, that is um, Ernest Hemingway. Uh, that was his favorite spot when he went to Spain. So there's just, I mean, I could do a whole PowerPoint on the cultural activities too. This is just a taste of, of some of the things we will do while we're there. And then also some trips. We're gonna plan a trip to Barcelona. It's about a three hour train ride. Um, there's some cathedrals there. Barcelona has a beach. Um, this is the Gothic Center, which is a, a section of Barcelona. Well, once again, I could, I could talk 20 minutes about Barcelona, but we'll, we'll go there hopefully for a weekend and um, you'll get to spend free time there with, your, um, with the other students. 
Um, San Sebastian is my personal favorite. Um, it's a beautiful beach town. It's about an hour from um, Pamploma. It is shopping, it has great food, a beautiful beach. And here I, I thought I was posing for a very nice picture to send home to my family and Dr. Milberth let this huge wave come over me. So those of you who are gonna travel with her, she's full of trickery, just so you know. Um, but no, we had a lot of fun and my, my shoes did dry out, but it was fun. Um, and then Madrid, on our way home, since we're flying in and out of Madrid, we're gonna go probably a day or two early. Madrid is an amazing city. Um, there we are at the cathedral near the Royal Palace. The buildings are just amazing. Um, I never knew this, but calamari sandwiches are popular in Madrid. It's one of their um, things they're famous for. So there we are enjoying our calamari sandwiches. And then last but not least, housing. Um, here is where we're gonna stay. It's about a five minute walk from the univer university. It's a very safe area. Um, similar to Rwanda, you'll have an apartment where you share a kitchen and a living room, but then there'll be two students in each bedroom. Everybody will have their own bed. You will share a couple bathrooms, um, but the, here are some pictures of the housing and uh, it, it was very nice and conveniently located. So that's, that's all I have. There's my contact information. Some of the students have emailed me, but I will turn it over to Kyle. All right, thank you, Dr. Kilroy. Um, I hope one of those programs, if not all three, captured your interest. They've, they've each got some special experiences to offer. So hopefully you found one that, that matches. I know if I were in your shoes, I'd probably have trouble deciding which one I wanna go on. Um, knowing though that um, cost is uh, sometimes a big concern for students, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the funding resources we have in place, as well as talk about how you can apply to one of these great programs if you're interested. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen and take you on a quick tour of the study abroad office website where you can find all of this information so one moment okay so first i have the um, disaster preparedness and global health in the caribbean program page pulled up just as an example um, and we're going to talk about the application process so each one of these programs has its own page on our website and when you pull up the page, you can see that there are tabs where you can recap all of the information we just covered for each program. So for instance, if you wanna meet with your academic advisor and talk about how this course works for your program, you can find that information here. All of the faculty members um, information is here too, in case you wanted to reach out to them and ask questions about the class or experience. The finances tab is where you'll find information related to the program fees and what is and isn't included in the program. And this is also where you'll find an individual cost sheet for each program. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about how this cost sheet can actually be a resource for you um, in terms of finding funding. So first, let me just explain the three main parts of the cost sheet. So you have what are called billable amounts up top which are the items that UIC would charge your student account if you end up participating on the program. So as you see, there's the application fee, the study abroad fee, and then the overall program fee. That's followed by what we call non-billables. And these are things that we will not be charging you, but we still wanted to give you a rough estimate for additional items you may incur cost for once you're traveling. So things like potential books or materials for your classes, you know, some money for local transportation, such as taxis or Ubers or buses for things you might want to do on your free time, um, an estimate for food, expenses for food not included on the program, and so forth. Now, obviously, it's very hard for us to tell you what you're going to spend money on, especially in terms of food and personal expenses. So I always like to tell students that the non-billable amount is really variable and dependent upon your personal circumstances. So you will not be charged this additional $1,300. It's just meant to give you an estimate. The other thing is this cost sheet can be a tool for you to bring to the financial aid office at UIC to discuss your financial aid package because you can use federal financial aid to help afford study abroad. And so that's what this last portion of the cost sheet is for. After you meet with a financial aid advisor, let's say they discussed your package with you and you found out you're gonna get a thousand dollar grant. Well, you can type that in here and then you can see that it lowers your estimated total cost of attendance for the program. And then let's say that you know you're gonna apply for the Gilman Scholarship, which we'll talk about in a moment, and you estimate you might get $1,000 for that. 
Again, it just further starts reducing your total cost of attendance. So this is a really great resource for you as you start thinking about how to afford one of these programs. And just to point out here, this little print icon will allow you to kind of print as a PDF if you'd like, and that's a great way for you to be able to email it to the financial aid office to ask for support. So please make sure you know where to find the cost sheet. But let's go back to the overview tab because this is where when you're ready to start your application, you will come. So if you wanted to apply for this program, all you would do is click apply now. You would log in with your UIC credentials and that will generate an online application for you. For all of these programs, there will be a series of short policy forms that you're asked to read and then electronically sign. And then I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, faculty, that every program does have a short meeting with the program leader, is that correct? I think we had discussed that for all three. If It will say in your application if that's the case. So if so, you'll be given the email address for the faculty director to arrange that time. There's no need to stress about any such meetings. It's just a chance for the faculty to get to know you, okay? So overall, the application process is really straightforward. It shouldn't take you uh, a long time at all to complete. Once you complete all the items within your online application, you'll submit it by pressing a submit button and that notifies our office to review it. And after we verify your eligibility, we would then contact you via email to let you know that you've been accepted to the program. And then your last step is just to commit by pressing the commit button within your application. And once you take that action, that saves you a spot on the program and you'll be going to Rwanda, Spain or St. Kitts and Nevis. So I hope that process makes sense, but if you have any questions once you get started, you of course can reach out to me. I'll be putting my email in the chat and we'll help you through that. Now let's continue talking a little bit about funding resources. So if we go back to our homepage, actually I have it up here. This is the homepage of the Study Abroad Office website. If you scroll down, we actually have a whole section about funding resources, okay? So I talked a little bit about federal financial aid. And of course, when we talk about financial aid, we're talking about loans and grants from the federal government. So here is a recap of information I described about the cost sheet and having your FAFSA on file in order to have your cost of attendance for the summer programs reassessed. So if you wanna read through that, it's here. But I wanted to spend uh, the rest of my time talking to you about scholarship opportunities because all three of these programs would actually be fantastic candidates for many of the study abroad scholarships that are out there. And we we know UIC students also are great candidates for applying for these. So we do have um, our own scholarships that we offer from the study abroad office. So you see some of those here. In this section, we also call out some specific departmental or college level scholarships that we are aware of, such as if you're an honors college student, you might be able to apply for that. But there are others. And so you're encouraged to ask your academic advisor for any other scholarship opportunities as well. All of our scholarship opportunities are listed in SNAP. If you're not familiar, that is the university's database that lists all scholarship opportunities. So in the event you wanna apply for one of these, you would just find the opportunity within SNAP. And I believe we have a link right up here to SNAP, okay? Beyond the study abroad office and university scholarships though, we also have what we call nationally competitive scholarships. And we list a few of these here. Some big ones are the Fund for Education Abroad, but um, Gilman as well. And I really wanna call attention to Gilman because UIC students have been incredibly successful at earning this scholarship. The Gilman International Scholarship is a federally funded scholarship that is um, for students who receive a Pell Grant. So if you receive a Pell Grant, please come talk to us because we can help you apply for the scholarship. And as you can see, students receive up to $5,000 um, from the scholarship. Um, the $8,000 would be if you were studying a critical language. Uh, I don't believe Spanish is currently considered a critical language. These are for languages such as Mandarin, Russian, Arabic, but just keep that in mind in case you wanna pursue another opportunity in the future. Regardless, $5,000 is still a great chunk of change. And again, we have been really successful at coaching students on how to apply for Gilman. Um, apart from, the, uh, the need to be a Pell Grant student, um, Gilman really favors diversity in many forms. And so in study abroad, we start to think about diversity very broadly. So um, not only, of course, are racial and ethnic minorities considered diverse for some study abroad programs, but first-generation college students. So if you're the first in your family to attend college, that makes you diverse. 
men are considered diverse and study abroad. Certain majors, including nursing and uh, other STEM fields, those are considered diverse. And then also locations. So while Europe is not considered a diverse destination for study abroad, um, Rwanda would certainly be and uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. And that doesn't mean that if you wanna go on a Spain program, you can't apply for Gilman. Actually, that would still be a pretty competitive program for any students in the nursing program because Gilman also likes to see an alignment of program choice with your future career goals. So we could help you write a very compelling um, essay for why you've selected any of these three programs based on what it is you wanna accomplish for your career and future studies. So again, this is just one really great example of a nationally competitive study abroad scholarship, but as you can see, there are many more which you might be eligible for. And beyond scholarships, we also talk to students about this idea of community-based funding. This is all about leveraging your networks to um, consider getting donations for your study abroad program. And the key here is really learning how to articulate why it is you want to study abroad. I think as you start sharing with um, your friends and family and organizations you're a part of, you'll find people are interested in your study abroad plans and they find it to be an exciting thing. So it really just um, depends on you to be able to professionally articulate why you're doing this. You know, you have to go beyond more than I just have always dreamed of going to Spain or I want to travel and see the world. You want to really start to think about what your goals are for any of these programs and again, how those can help you succeed in your future career and academic goals. And so our advisors can help you articulate that. We talk through different strategies that past students have had, but one of my favorite um, is crowdsource funding. And you might have seen websites such as, um, oh goodness, I've, I've lost the, I've forgotten the one that I see all the time. GoFundMe. Go Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there are many of these. One, though, that is specific for study abroad programs is called Fund My Travel. And so basically the concept here is you would create a free page on one of these sites, describe what you're raising money for, and then you have an easy way to collect donations for your study abroad program. Now, I can tell you right now, if you create one of these sites, you plaster it on your social media one time, you're not going to get many donations, right? We've all seen these probably from friends and family. What goes into a compelling crowdsource campaign is um, repetition, setting a realistic goal. So for instance, sometimes I see students put the full, you know, six, seven, $10,000 program fee on there. And that can kind of be discouraging as a potential donor. It's like, will my $5 donation even make a difference? Instead, after you talk with financial aid and learn about your financial aid and scholarship opportunities, I would encourage you to put your unmet need as your goal or maybe your plane ticket as your goal, because then that becomes more realistic for potential donors to get behind and help donate. Other strategies though include um, coming up with a campaign to thank your donors. So I've seen pretty creative things such as, if you donate $5, I'll send you a postcard from my travels abroad. If you donate $10, I'll give you access to the blog I'm gonna keep while I'm abroad. So you can see pretty quickly how you can start to get creative with ways to give back to your donors. There's a long list though of other tips. So if this is something you'd like to pursue, now is the time to start thinking of putting it together. That way you have ample lead time to save some money for your program because these aren't happening till the summer, of course. So again, I know that's a lot of information, but we have it all compiled in this little section on our website. And this is what our advisors are trained to work with students on. So don't let cost be the reason you don't consider going on one of these great programs. Please come talk to us. See, we're right at the top of the hour. I can stay on a few more minutes. I do have a, a student advising appointment, but hopefully my colleagues can stay on too. So we will now turn it over to you all who are still here and see if there's any questions. Thank you. Uh, one more thing, Kyle, I just want to add. So there are some specific scholarships through this College of Nursing for study abroad. There are two um, definitely that are $500 each. And then um, Dr. Kilroy may have some specific scholarships available as well for the Spain program specifically. Um, so all of this information from today, as well as our lectures and links to um, both the study abroad office, the program applications, as well as the nursing specific scholarship um, for study abroad, will all be on the Nursing Global Health page, and um, I'll send that out to all students here early next week. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now, but we're gonna um, be on here if there's any questions, if you have program specific questions um, or any questions about you know, study abroad financing application, okay? 
Thank you. All right, open floor for questions. Feel free to put it in the chat or unmute yourself. We'd be happy to, to take them. 